Mal camping in the air. It's like Charlie. <laughs> Someone has a great breakfast. Anyway, we have an awesome video for you today. It's all about national parks, and one of the things we love doing is going way back and finding all the gems of our travel to give you a head start on making an epic trip. Okay, in this video, we're talking about our top 10 national parks, and Trish has five spectacular drives. I do, and I have resources. <laughs> yes, tons of resources, and we're thrilled that this video is kicking off summer to remember so we want to talk to you about that but before we get started if you're looking for a little national park inspiration then we made a little video for you and then we'll meet you right back here on the picnic table Those are grizzly bears, my friends. When I put down see a bear, I had no idea there would be two. They would be grizzlies, and we would be like the second person in line at the stop. Like they've stopped traffic, so we have a front row seat. <laughs> this is amazing. It doesn't get much better. It does not. It is amazing. Okay, now that we've got that song stuck in your head for the rest of the day, you're welcome. We just wanted to say that national parks could be some of the crowning jewels in your travels because they're spectacular, they're awe-inspiring. Yep. And so that's why this season, we are doing a national park blitz. That's what this that season is, is all about. A lot of people are saying, what is the theme for this season? National park blitz. More on that yes. in this video, but we said that we were super excited that this video was kicking off this year's Summer to Remember, 22. Winning design! This is the winning design. Thank you so much for voting. If you're wondering right now, how come I didn't get to vote? You gotta get on our email yep. list because yep. we send out really cool stuff like that. And we love that people get to participate. That's our favorite part mm -hmm. about KYD is that we have this cool relationship. Yes. Well, we had no idea when we started Summer to Remember that the KYD community would embrace Summer to Remember. Full and, adoption and mode. And turn it into something <laughs> that so far exceeded our expectations. We hear stories all the time where someone's hiking on a trail and they see the shirt and they're like, hey, and friendships are made. It makes the world a little smaller. Yeah. And as Trish says, this is more than a shirt. It's like a symbol of going out there and making it happen. That's right. So we always love to do a KYD list. We have those free and downloadable you mean the printable, for you. like the summer fun list? Yes, so that you can go ahead and say, what is it that I wanna get after this summer? That's mm -hmm. what this is all about, making memories. Mm -hmm. And um, when you put it down on the list and you, it doesn't have to be big either. It doesn't nope. have to be That's how gigantic. it all started. Yes! It started in 2013 with Trish and I making a list of things, the little things that we could do to make the summer special. Yes. 
Yeah. And so you check those off one at a time. Maybe it's just a hike. Maybe it's throwing glow sticks in your pool and doing, how many people can grab them? Maybe it's going to a national park that you've yeah. never been to before. So that's what we're doing right now. As a community, we're hoping that you make great plans for this summer, whether they're small or big, and, and then you include us. Yes. Um, because we love to tag along. So social media it up. Tag, tag along mm -hmm. with the hashtag summer remember. Okay, so where to get them? keepyourdaydream.com forward slash summer 22. Mm -hmm. That will redirect you to a site where there is another video. And if there's only two things to get out of that video, it is sizes and shipping date. Those are the two things to figure out. But we have all, what's really cool about this year's winning design is it's giving us the opportunity to provide so many more colors. We have like a bright blue, which yes. is awesome. And then the black t-shirt, which we've never done. Hoodies and blue and red and all sorts of cool stuff. Yeah. So head on over there, check it out. And we cannot wait to see you on social media through hashtag summer remember. And also know that a dollar for every shirt goes to Team Rubicon. That's where our vets are getting mobilized <laughs> to go do great things in the community, whether it's after a natural disaster or building things back up. They're using their talents to help out. And now let's start talking about national parks. Let's start with a little bit of an overview mm -hmm. because there was there was something that was uh, that was confusing when I was doing the research, mm -hmm. and that is that there are over 400 national parks in the United States. Mm -hmm. But that includes all the national parks, the crown jewels, the 63 crown jewels that you think of like Zion and Yosemite and mm -hmm. Glacier, right? Mm -hmm. But it also includes 129 national monuments. Yes. And some of those national monuments turn into national parks like Gateway Arch. Right. In St. Louis. Yes. But then there's national shoreline that will include things like pictured rocks up mm -hmm. in the Upper Peninsula, mm -hmm. Sleeping Bear Dunes, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so altogether there's over 400 national parks. So the first resource that I want to mention is the passport. This is so much fun. Mm -hmm. Young or old, mm -hmm. okay? I'm getting pretty jazzed about this thing. <laughs> you are. I am. So um, anyway, this breaks down your national parks and your monuments and everything by area. So you're in California, they're all green. You go to DC, that's our red national right, capital region, good. they're all red. Sweet. So we go to our purple region, gives you all the states, Puerto Rico and Virgin Island, then tells you what you're looking for in every place. Wow. So then you get a little information. Now, your very first stamp is going to be right, brothers. We have picked our top 10. And of course, you know, knowing in true KYD fashion, we have um, some extras. Uh, honorable mentions. We never just stay. <laughs> no, we, we never stop at 10. 10. <laughs> we really mean like 13. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we have our top 10. And this is in order of when they were established. So. First runner up, Yellowstone. Traveling from the deep forest into the sun. In war, there's never an option to run. of the words that we use to describe Yellowstone is huge. Yep. You're there for the fun fact, the hypothermal features like <laughs> old, old Faithful and yep. just the crazy things you're about to see. But um, it is so large that you have to plan accordingly. You're not seeing this park in one day. No, that was one of the things that surprised us. We stayed at Fishing Bridge uh, Park. That's the only place at the time we stayed that had full hookups. Mm -hmm. And we thought we would go over to, you know, go see this and go see that. We had no idea that we were about to embark on an hour or two drive to get yes. there. And that's if no bison are crossing the street. Right, which could totally delay you or a bear. We call it a bear jam. If you're yep. looking at your Google Maps and you see a little red zone, there's wildlife. Yep. And that's something to get excited about. Yeah. Now, one of the things that uh, we learned right away that can help break down these national parks and get the most out of it is to see what services are available at the national park. Mm -hmm. This was Trisha's idea before we even left back at the home before season one. You said, how about you and Tori do a photo tour yes. at Yellowstone? And so we signed up for it and we went around. Tori and I went around in this big yellow bus. Mm -hmm. And what, what a great way to see the park from the eyes of somebody that really knows it well. Yes, when you get an insider scoop on what's happening, where are the animals coming from, where do they go at night, mm -hmm. what's happened here in the past, it's like you um, expand your experience by 10 yep. times, 10 <clears throat> fold. Yep. So anyway, think about your budget, 
who is on the trip with you? I know that you and Victoria were super into photography yeah. at the time. And so, okay, how can we get the two of you to go do something special and maximize our budget? Yeah. And then kind of pull back on some other things mm -hmm. so that we had that one epic memory when we were there. Okay, some things to see when you are at Yellowstone. Okay, obviously Old Faithful. Yes. Because it's so dang reliable, okay? <laughs> and that's why everybody's there. It's a sure thing, that geyser. Okay, and then, but my favorite, Yes. I don't know if you have a favorite. My favorite is the Grand Prismatic Spring. Oh. That's the one with all the blue and the oh, orange and yes. the copper. Yes. Yes. Right? And you're walking on this little plank, and as a parent, you're thinking, if my child falls off this plank, I'm... it's over. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, but if you would like to know some of the other things, you can check out the blog. Where are we calling this? Uh, Keeperdaydream.com forward slash national parks. Yes. And that will redirect you to this so that you can go and you can look at all these national parks and some of our other recommendations. Yes. One of the things we have not done in Yellowstone, which I would love to do, mm. is to go into the hot springs where the where the cold oh, water is coming yes. down the river and it meets with the hot spring water and you can kind of be like hot yeah. over here and cold yeah. over here. Yes, yes. I am I'm a sucker for a hot spring as long as <laughs> it is completely natural. Okay, so okay, next. next up, Yosemite. Look at that mountain. It's you have unbelievable. to be able to see that. say for mm -hmm. Yellowstone or Yosemite is grandeur. It is so grand and you can see that by car or yeah. if you get into the park. And that's one thing we want to chat about with all the national parks is figuring out how are you going to dive in. Mm -hmm. This year we won lottery tickets to go <laughs> backpacking. Yeah, so. this was Trisha's idea to send the boys on a backpacking trip, but it backfired because we suckered her into coming with us. So now you have to go. We don't know about that yet. We don't know about that yet. <laughs> So anyway, figuring out who is on your team, what do people like to do? Um, Carson and Caleb have been asking to go backpacking forever. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we thought, well, you know, it's actually a big deal and you have to carry everything on your back. Mm -hmm. So we've been waiting for the perfect time and it just so happens this is the year. <laughs> if it all works together. I, yes. I still think that there's a lot that has to come together. We have the permits, but we have to plan the trip and do all the other stuff. Yes. That is one of the things this year that you need to consider is park reservations. Yes. Some parks, are you know they're very popular right now and you have to do some research we would do it in this video but it changes all too time. often so you got to do your research as to does it require a reservation to get into the park does it require a reservation for your vehicle to get into the park mm -hmm. what reservations do you need to camp there and then oftentimes if you are able to camp there we're camping at smoky mountain national park this year mm -hmm. that includes your reservation to get into the park right so there's things like that you have to do um yes it's a little fatiguing Yes, it can be a little frustrating. Uh, any government website to make a, a campground reservation requires a PhD in red tape, but <laughs> it is worth it in the end. Every time I'm frustrated, like why don't why don't they just make this easier yes. when I get that park and we're set up in that national park and I'm there, I always say the same thing. I'm glad we went through the trouble and I forget about all the nonsense. Right. right. So just try to stay as patient as possible when it comes to crowds and things like this, because in the end, you will look back at your experience at these parks, <clears throat> parks like we have on these videos, and you'll be glad you did. Yes. Okay. A couple. One of my favorite things there mm -hmm. is the Mist Trail. Ah, that's just what I was gonna say. That's my favorite, yeah. and we have been there several times. Either whether it's coming out of a backpacking trip, yeah. or we brought our kids up to go see it. Mm -hmm. It's just phenomenal, and that's something you can do in one day. So it if is. you're in the park, you could go and do that. You it is a heck of a hike, though. So um, you definitely want to bring your your A game to that hike. Uh, not although just because, I've seen flip flops on that hike. Well, I'm I've seen saying. I've seen penny loafers on every hike I've ever <laughs> been on, but that doesn't mean it's like recommended. And so, uh, but it is it is steep. And then when you get up toward the top of the waterfalls where the mist is coming over the trail, it can even be slippery. Right. Um, but it, if if you have the ability, it's it's something worth doing. But like Trish said, Yosemite is one of those great national parks where simply driving through you just feel like a little little peon a little in, in the world right yes. and 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 that's what i love about some of these national parks zion included fun fact lincoln actually preserved the land first before it became a national park he was like wow. whoa 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 this place yeah. is out of control we need to do something about it so he preserved it and then it became a national park which i think is awesome all right what is number three on the list glacier
Let's see. Closed, 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 full, closed, 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 closed. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> Of this place. I know. We did. You guys were busy. We did. Filming and, and talking and, and drinking, and drinking, drinking and wine, fixing, and fixing leveling, water heaters, snuggling. <laughs> well, there was a little of that actually. <laughs> Glacier. One word. Spectacular. It is. The most stunning park I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. My favorite might be Zion, but this is close. Yeah. This is. It's. It's jaw-dropping well that people say that it's the closest to like the Swiss Alps in the United States yes and as you're driving or biking if you have the opportunity to go up the going to the Sun Road you'll see these these shots and, and you'll look around and you'll think this there's no way that this is here right because I mean those that maybe grew up in the United States you, we, we have a tendency sometimes to take it for granted yes right and and like you know some of the great stuff is further away than you can get to but I'm telling you Right. Uh, Glacier is one of those places that is spectacular. Yes. And so one of the things that we um, hope you consider is that you don't always have to be camping inside the mm -hmm. park. Don't get discouraged. There's usually great camping outside a park. And the bonus there is that you'll have Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> you'll have maybe a little bit of reprieve to kind of get out and get some um, full hookups, things mm -hmm. like that. So Glacier is one of those places where two of the best RV parks we've ever seen yeah. are right outside Glacier's door. Well, we stayed um, at wet on the west side of Glacier, mm -hmm. and Trish is right there. The KOA there, I think, is actually known to be like the best KOA in the country. Yes. And then we stayed at uh, a Pursuit RV park just outside of the, like, like literally right on the outside of the sign where it says, welcome to Glacier. That's where the RV park is. Yes. Uh, I think it's called West Glacier RV Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, full hookups, but one thing I want to mention is if you have older kids like we do, and your RV does not accommodate them staying with you, did Tori find a whitefish? She did. And then that's about 45 minutes, and then she stayed in a cabin. Yes. Think about that all the time because you could be bringing friends, you could be bringing older kids. Um, we have an Airstream. We could have maybe one extra guest, but that's it. Yeah. So um, other Airstream owners might be like, I can fit 10 people in there. <laughs> so it's our choice that yeah. we're like, nah. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, but the, that was a beautiful cabin. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, and she was supposed to have a friend that came out with her. So yeah. anyway, it had lots of room for others. Okay, so things to do in Glacier. Of course, the going to the Sun Road is the is the big draw mm -hmm. to Glacier. Um, a couple other things. We did this wonderful nature hike where we saw that deer. I keep using the picture of that deer because it was looking Sweet. up and over. Yes. Um, so that was really, it's just the, the sheer volume of water through the rivers in there is amazing. Yes. So uh, Glacier is just one of those places where Definitely worth a visit. It's gonna be a little bit busy this year, but that's okay. It's okay because it's 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 worth it. Oh, here's the thing. Kim and John gave us the like, yeah, hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wake up early. Yeah. And you get your parking spot. And when I say early, I really mean early, mm -hmm. so that you can get in there, get the spot that you want, and start going on that hike. And the feeling that you will have being alone and looking up at these mountains mm -hmm. and this rushing water is the whole reason you came. So it's worth it. Get uncomfortable, get in the park, wake up early, go as far as you can, find a hike because it will be a lasting memory and make sure you document it. Yeah. Take those pictures, take a moment to just pause, take a picture, take a video so that you can relive it as much as possible later if, on. If there is one secret to the national parks, it is the early bird gets the worm. Yeah and uh, there will be no lines. People don't wake up early. There'll no. be no lines. They'll, they'll, you'll, get, you'll, you'll, you'll get full access to the entire park before everyone wakes up. Yeah, starting about 10 o'clock, it's, it's called house. Crowds, Madhouse. Okay, next up, Rocky Mountain National Park. Think I got the chance And I ain't gonna waste it Honey tripping romance <laughs> this, is so, this is so demeaning. <laughs> Dude, that is such a cool hat. <laughs> oh my gosh, hi! How's it going? Good! Good! Are you having fun? This is our time. Rocky Mountain National Park, located in Estes. It's a cute town, lots of places to walk around that feel a little bit more urban, mm -hmm. and you have access to wonderful hiking. Yeah. I mean, stunning oh, what is the word? hiking. I said hiking, you said 
wildlife. Yes. Well, we saw wildlife everywhere, and everywhere. this is a warning. <laughs> Heed this warning. <laughs> Be careful what your dog is eating. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> or you might just find yourself at a Jackson, Wyoming veterinarian, which yes. is the next stop if you're in, if you're going to Rocky Mountain National Park. Yes. So anyway, there's so much wildlife, and they leave behind little trinkets. Okay. <laughs> and so you just want to be careful of your dogs and any yeah. other animals you may yeah. have. Things to do in Rocky Mountain National Park, other than just driving it and going up to the very top, because I think it's known for the highest highway in the like actual highway in yes. the continental. Yes. And you can go up there. We got a great time lapse from up there. The other thing we did, the hiking is just amazing. We did Emerald Lake. We hiked up to Emerald Lake. Now, the time we went, which was, I think, in June, still lots of snow. Mm -hmm. And if you're planning on going to a lot of national parks on the shoulder season, it might not be a bad idea to have some micro spikes. Yes. It might sound like, well, I'm not that extreme. This isn't a, an extreme thing. Micro spikes just have like, it's like a little wire coil. And you just wrap them on the bottom of your shoe. And if there's any ice or snow, you're going to walk normal and everyone else is going to be holding on to things. Okay? Yeah, it really takes the danger out of some of these steeper hikes that have ice on yeah. them. I do recommend that for, for places that have snow. Grand Canyon on the shoulder season is another place on the top of the rim. We'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, so we went up and we hiked Emerald Lake, uh, crossing logs over streams with snow, getting up to emerald colored lakes. Mm -hmm. Stunning. Yes. Really stunning. One of the things that I enjoyed is the boys were together on that hike and it was a blast to see them. In the beginning, they complain, mm -hmm. right? They're like, mm -hmm. why are we here? Where, where are my snacks? Mm -hmm. And in the middle, they start connecting. Mm -hmm. And so, and then they're like, hey, let's go jump in that freezing cold water. <laughs> and so then they go do that. And then they heckle each other. And then they have fun and they laugh. And there's the memory. Yes. So I just want to give a special reminder for the parents that just get through that, like maybe the harder times, we call it the dip. Um, even in just a little hike, you, it, they might start out and just be like, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. <laughs> but in the middle, you're going to get to this special spot. And that's where the connections are made. And then you get to the end of the hike where it's spectacular and they realize why why you brought yeah. them here that, that you know you're not just trying to cause pain in their life <laughs> <laughs> yes mandatory fun mandatory, mandatory fun. fun okay what's next Grand Canyon Hi, dad what do you think um whoa Have you not ever seen the Grand Canyon before I don't think I do you know when um you know when you look down at something yeah and it kind of spins yeah you know yeah like in the movies yeah that's what I'm feeling right now Did you know the Grand Canyon is bigger than the state of Rhode Island? Well, that sounds like a fun fact. <laughs> that is a fun <laughs> fact. Do you have a word for Grand Canyon? Uh, well, I think the reason that you extracted hiking off of Rocky Mountain is because you wanted to apply it to the Grand Canyon. Yes. And, and, I, and I went along with that because in order to really experience the Grand Canyon, if, if you can, it, it, you should get inside of it. Yes. Well, there's train rides that there you can are. go yep. do. Um, there's you can go and just snap a picture, mm -hmm. kind of like Clark. You want to look at the Grand Canyon? Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. The Griswold family they snapped a picture, <laughs> but he had pressing matters that he had to attend to, <laughs> yes, if yes. you recall. But here's the thing: with a national park, you can do the drive, you can view it, but um, to take away something spectacular, it's the time. And maybe you just are sitting there and enjoying it a little bit. I have to say, I'm guilty. The first time I went to the Grand Canyon, I looked and I was like, "Okay, I paid twenty dollars to do this." <laughs> and so, really, what I needed to do, and I had no idea, is that you hike down. Oh, that's the first national park I ever saw. Oh, okay. Oh, is good. Grand Canyon yeah. when I moved to Arizona. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's yes. Right. Okay. Wow. This is like a walk. <laughs> Every lane. This you, is so fun. you do need to get inside. And what did you think when you went down inside? And you, we only oh. hiked down about two or three miles. It was totally different. I yeah. totally had a new appreciation for the Grand Canyon. Whereas when I went in college, I was mm -hmm. like, all right, I guess yeah. I did this. But speaking of Grand Canyon, I really wanted to talk about Havasu Pie Falls. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, we went there for our 15 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. This was back in the day where it didn't cost $300 to go. No. Now there's some lottery and it's much more expensive, but if you have an opportunity and that's in your wheelhouse, you might want to apply for it because seeing sparkling blue water Amazing. at the bottom of the Grand Canyon is mind blowing. Yeah. It is. The other thing I'll say about staying in the Grand Canyon is you can stay in Williams, Arizona, and it's about an hour to an hour and a half drive north. You can stay, uh, we stayed at Trailer Park, Trailer RV Village, I believe, something very close to that, um, which is right there. 
There are RV parks that you can stay at that don't include full hookups, and there's tons of Bureau of Land Management around the area. Yes. So you have lots of options, but you do need to do a little digging. Yes. Uh, anything else on the Grand Canyon? Okay, what's next? Acadia! I, I wouldn't appreciate more than recreation.gov. I agree. Because that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> it's like recreation.gov slash Acadia slash who's the dummy now that didn't make a reservation <laughs> slash. Slash, <laughs> you're out of luck. Even though you have a park pass, you still have to pay $2 slash dot gov. She's got a sharp tongue. She has wonderful taste. Her heart is a terrible thing to wear. She wants to eat. Many dogs on the trail, yes. and so someone told us that they are allowed in Acadia. Yes, they just need to be on a leash. It's like right. one of the few national parks that allow dogs. I just realized that that's the hike. Right there. There's two little white shirts up there and a red shirt. I'm kind of not feeling so so excited about this. This is great. This is this is why when the thing you wanted to do doesn't work out, you should find something else. Because then this is what you find. Okay, so fun fact. Mm -hmm. Acadia was actually founded by private citizens versus government. Really? Yes, and then it became a national park. There's a whole history, you can look into it. Yeah. It's really neat, and one word that we use is peaceful. We th it's, it's very peaceful. Yes. It's very tranquil, and there is a drive through Acadia. Is that mm -hmm. is that one of your top five it drives? Um, there's a drive through there that, by the way, if you're into cycling or if you have an electric bike and you like riding, yes. every time I'm driving through Acadia, I think this would be a wonderful place to ride. Yes. It's very peaceful. Uh, the views are spectacular. You can get down there into the water crashing up onto the, the, the shoreline, which is great. But there's also really great hiking. And the first time we went, we did, we didn't hike because we had the boys, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, you know, they were like, no, hiking. No, but stop as, with the hiking. As they got older and, and we could start doing more hikes, we went and we did the beehive hike. Now this, this is like one of my top hikes in all of the country. Yes. This is a wonderful hike. Of course, it's super steep and you're going over railings and, 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 and planks of wood and up the side. But if you're not into all that, you just go up the back. And, and if it, you have a dog. You go up the back. Yes. All right, so you can make it a little easier. But once you get up there, there's a huge view of Acadia. And then the other tip we'll say is that we did Acadia, was it September? It was right after my yes, birthday. That's so the, go ahead. The, that's what I want to talk about is the secret season. Find out what the secret season is for each individual national park. Mm -hmm. Because in Acadia, we went when the leaves started turning. That's right. And so, and the crowd started going yep. down. Mm -hmm. And it was stunning. The weather was perfect. It was crisp. And the views were out of this world. Well, and the other nice thing about that, going in September, is it teed us up so nicely to go down to Vermont and the Route 100 for the fall to see the colors change. So I guess the, the tip here as a whole is if you can figure out what the secret season is or the shoulder season, uh, it can be just as spectacular. That is the word for this video. It spectacular. really is. Uh, it can be just as, as spectacular and you can kind of get some other things in the area that's fun. Yes. Okay, number seven on the list, Zion National Park. Do we have everything? I sure hope so. Have you made it? I feel like I have, but I can see that there's more. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I've been waiting to do this hike for four years. Today's the day. It was worth it. It was worth it. The view, everything. You have a big rig, let's just say something more than 30 feet. So you can come out here in this great big open space for free. Okay, Zion National Park. And by the way, when you go there, the locals will refer to it as Zion. That's right. Not Zion. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing about that is that that was not its first name. The fun fact for Zion is that its original national park name was Mukintuweep. But the- <laughs> He's the one who pulled the short straw. Who wants to say that? <laughs> who wants to say that? So the, the reason that they changed the name is that the National Park Service was concerned 
that if they had a name that people couldn't pronounce, they wouldn't go there. So instead they called it Zion so that everyone could just mispronounce the name. <laughs> That's right. Zion. Oh, you can tell the locals from the visitors. You can tell the locals from the visitors yes. to Zion. So. Yes. Well, one of the things that we want to help you consider is using Bureau of Land Management. You can look that up and get all the details, but the further you travel west, the more opportunities there are mm -hmm. to dry camp around some amazing locations. Yep. And Zion is one of those locations. For me, Zion is one of my favorite places to go. The tunnel system, the little window oh, yeah. views, and you peek through and you start to see this amazing stretch that is Zion. What It's like a canyon, all the canyon oh, walls. Well, yeah. And then we were able to camp and you see these dark walls uh -huh. and the sky changing colors and then the sun falls away and the stars come out and they are brilliant. Yes. Zion's a spectacular, it reminds, <laughs> I said the word again, uh, it, reminds, <laughs> it reminds us of Yosemite but just a different color because yes. it has that grandeur, it has mm -hmm. the scale and, and, and the other word that comes to mind is like magical. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to stay in Watchman Camp ground because we went there in the winter and we had like the place to ourselves. We did. But um, if you can't get into Watchman, we have previously stayed at Zion River Ranch, which is about five miles outside of the gates. Mm -hmm. And if you can't stay there, there's all sorts of Bureau of Land Management available to you. Mm -hmm. um, lots of hiking there to do also. Um, if we can, if we can get permits this year, we're going to attempt to do the 12 mile hike from the top of the Narrows all the way and, and then exit out the Narrows if we can get our permits. Um, that was one of the tips we want to share with you is sometimes in order to find out what reservations you might need, you should figure out what it is that you want to do there and then determine if that needs permits. Right. Because the other thing that Zion now is doing is they're doing uh, reservations or permits for Angel's Landing. Ah, yes. Yeah. So some of those spectacular hikes are going to need extra thought. And we're yeah. stretching ourselves this yeah. year. We're terrible at <laughs> making future plans. We just kind of let things roll because that's the beauty of RVing. Yeah. You hit a town and mm -hmm. you're like, I love this place. I never want to leave. And then two weeks later, you're like, okay, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you move on to the next place. And yeah. so that's why we like to fly by the seat of our pants. Mm -hmm. But with national parks, that's not really something you're going to be able to do. You need to do a little bit of research and find out. That's how I ended up with lottery tickets yep. to Yosemite yep. was they said, okay, do it t today. It was like the last day for, you know, in August. I was like, okay, I got to get on this. And then you get the email, you won. And you're like, yes. The other thing I wanted to say though, is if you can't get an Angel's Landing, consider just going to a different time of year. I mean, that really is the secret to these national parks. I mean, we froze going there in January, mm -hmm. but it was still worth it because mm -hmm. we had Angel's Landing pretty much to ourselves. I think there were like, like seven or eight other hikers. Right. Whereas in the summertime, it's going to be like a string of people. Blood right? of people. Okay. So Zion, high on the list. But number eight, my favorite national park, the Grand Tetons. Yes. And I'm going to peruse. Just give me two hours. Okay. Okay. This is just as gorgeous. It's even more gorgeous than it's I remember it. So amazing. Well, the snow and everything. Yeah. And the clouds kind of add an element. They do. Mm -hmm. Okay, Trish, what are the fun facts and word for the Grand Teton National? Um, okay, we have explore mm. and accessible. Yeah. Because you can drive the Grand Tetons and get the same view. Yeah. It is absolutely stunning. Uh, but again, if you dig deep and you go in there, you guys went on a hike. Well, that's why I put explore because I mean, I like Grand Tetons was my favorite national park before we went on this hike with the boys. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know you've seen lots of footage and even in this episode of the boys jumping off of what they call jump rock. And we went back there, it was about a five mile hike and it was pretty steep and long getting out of there, mm -hmm. but it was so worth it. And so I think if you can explore the Tetons, there's so much dry camping there and upper Tetons. And then there's dry camping just below the Sawtooth Mountains and that river. And so if you can get up there and explore, and then Trish said accessible because you know there isn't actually a gate to get into the Tetons. If you come through Jackson, you're just kind of driving along and you're like looking left, you're like, there, there are they the, are. There, there are the Tetons. And mm -hmm. so it's a very accessible national park. And we particularly like Jackson. It's a little touristy now, but it's still got a really cool vibe. One thing that I would recommend is if you go out to dinner, ask your waiter or waitress, what's the locals mm. hike? Because that's how we've learned where the locals go. And with that one hike, when you guys um, well, Emerald we learned that way, but the hike that you did here in the Tetons. It was a local recommendation. It was a local recommendation and there were local kids there. So even though our boys got there and they were exhausted, 
that was it was it was filled with teenagers. It was a local high school spot where the kids would go and, and jump off this rock. And, and you're right, we got that from the waiter the night before, and so we said we'd go do that. So definitely, if you can tap into the local resources, of course, you can always tap into uh, RVers because they're a wealth of knowledge. But, Absolutely. Uh, the locals, they know the hot spots. They know the hot spots. In regards of camping, the Grand Tetons has also my favorite state park, mm -hmm. and that is Coulter Bay Campground. Ah, oh, so it's, beautiful. And it backs right up against Jackson Lake, and it's a stunning campground with full hookups, big rig friendly, uh, and you know, it's difficult to get into, but I will, I will encourage you, if you can't get in, just take advantage of that last minute. If you can't get in, but you're there anyway, just call and say, hey, you got a reservation for today or tomorrow, and I'll bet your chances might look good about getting in there. Yeah. All right, number nine on the list, and I love saying it, I'm glad it made the top 10 just so I can say it, the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. I love the Smoky Mountains. You can explore here forever, and there's no fee to get in. You are my favorite place to go. You're at the end of my favorite road. Above the rest, you're the best I know. It really makes me want to go to Angel's Landing oh, in yes. Zion. That is one of the national parks that we would like to go back to. You are my favorite shade of rose. A flower bed on my favorite stone. I love the ground where your roots have grown. You wear three. Fun fact most visited national park. Yes. That may have something to do with the fact that it's free. I also think it has something to do with the fact that it is a means for people to travel through yes. to get to the other side. Yes. Right? So I, I don't know if everyone who's going there when they're clocking the cars is going to visit the park. Yes, so they're a using couple, it as a thoroughfare. A couple technical details, but what a thoroughfare it is, Yes. right? Because I believe that's on your one of your um, top five scenic it is. drives. And this is one of the parks where, you know, like the Grand Canyon, you could go and look and say, Okay, I got it. You can do the same thing in Smoky National Park. You can say, I've driven down a green, beautiful road, getting here on the way out. But when you dig in and you mm -hmm. go on some of the hikes, it will blow your mind. Yeah, I mean, one of the uh, one of the one of our top five hikes that we've ever done was uh, was it called the chimney chimney top the chimney top hike and. Uh, it has these like beautiful stairs that that just kind of like follow meander. the meander. They they follow the contours of the side of the mountain. Um, you're walking over bridges and streams. Uh, we we got our boys to go with us. We got to the bottom. They jumped into the cold water. Uh, we saw bears, tons of wildlife there. But again, we saw the wildlife back on the trails. Mm -hmm. We didn't see any wildlife where all the tourists were. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there are lots of places to stay. That's the other thing that's nice about the Great Smoky Mountain National Park is that we are staying this year, we're staying in one of the campgrounds. Mm -hmm. But in the past, we've stayed just outside of the National Park, which wasn't that bad. So what I like about the Smoky National Park is that there's a little something for everyone. Mm -hmm. So maybe some people in your group aren't really outdoorsy and they're like, no. I'll go on this hike because I love you, <laughs> not because I want to. And um, But then the next night you guys can go out to eat. There's Gatlinburg, which is I think a German town. It's so cute and there's lots of shops. So you could do shopping, you could do mm -hmm. eating, there's ice cream, but then you also have access to all the great outdoors. In fact, well, one quick point that what you said about love, going on the hike because you love people. Is that why you're going to go backpacking with us in Yosemite <laughs> yeah, this summer? Yeah, maybe. You see? Yeah, you trapped maybe. yourself with that one. Maybe. What I was going to say about Gatlinburg is that there is, um, I can't remember the name, it's on the tip of my tongue, but you can take the chairlift up to the top and then you can oh, go yes. across those those Anastasia, wood. Anastasia. Anastasia. Yeah. Anastasia. Anastasia. I don't know. Anastasia. I can't remember the name. But anyway, you can go up there and we did that. Uh, and go across all the bridges and stuff like that. So if you have a teenager who loves to take pictures and if they don't get a good photo session in, the day didn't even happen, okay? <laughs> There's moms out there, they know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. That's the place to go yeah. because you take the little chair lift up, you walk across the rope, yeah. bridges, yeah. There's, a, there's a heart made out of vines. We <laughs> took a great picture there, I yeah. love that picture. So anyway, uh, there's, you know, when you're talking about bringing teenagers, um, really respecting, and that might be a big word, but respecting the fact that they enjoy documenting at a different level than we might be used to. Tol tolerating is another word. Tolerating. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when they get that, they're probably more amenable to the things that you want to do and they may come back again in the future. Yes. Okay. 
This is it, number 10, before we get to our honorable mentions, and that is, and again, this, these were in order of when they were established, not based upon our being like best or most favorite. And that is Arches National Park. So fun fact, yes. Arches didn't become a national park until 100 years after Yellowstone. Would that be 1971, Trish? <laughs> you guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of our tips for traveling to the West, because most people are saying, okay, what am I doing this summer? And when you talk about the West, it gets hot. Mm -hmm. So we like to remind you that if you stay high in elevation, you can stave off some of that hot weather. Not all of it, but some of it. Look for about 5,000, 5,500 feet in elevation. Anything over 5,000 feet in elevation, it still might be hot during the day, but the important thing is, is once that sun goes down, because it's such a dry heat, um, it, it cools down at night. And for us, we just want to have the option to dry camp without running the air conditioning. Right. And so we can we can tolerate some heat in the daytime, knowing that when it gets about eight or nine o'clock at night, and we have to go to sleep. That we can turn a fan on and, and and open up a window and keep it cool inside the RV, so we don't have to run a generator for the AC. That's right. The only reason I bring that up is because dry camping in Bureau of Land Management is one of the backup plans if you can't get into an RV park in these popular places, mm -hmm. knowing that you can use Harvest Host or Boondockers Welcome or or a, a cracker barrel, whatever, wherever you want to stay in dry camp, knowing that you have that as a backup might help you push your limits in terms of saying, well, I don't have a reservation out there, but I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try to get in when I get there. Yes. And if I don't get in, I can dry camp, but you have to make sure that it's cool enough. Yes, I get an email just about every other day that says, where should I stay in Moab? No joke. And yeah. I say, anywhere available. Yes. <laughs> because yeah. that's the truth. If you can get anywhere in Moab, and if in the summer, for me, I really like to stay in an RV park because then I have something reliable for Charlie, our yeah, dog. Yeah, that's true. So, um, so anyway, if you are traveling to a place that is really actually very warm, mm -hmm. um, try and get that RV park. But it's really about availability. Are you going to be um, inconvenienced driving 45 minutes to get into the park? Sure. But will you be able to have that memory? Yes. Yes, yeah. So, and the cool thing about Arches is, is it's, it's right next door to... Um, Canyonlands and Dead Horse Pass. Wait, no, Dead Horse Pass is in Canyonlands. Mm -hmm. So you got Canyonlands, Arches. I thought there was one more. I thought there was one more because there's the Mighty Five. So you got Capitol Reef. That's on our list this year. Oh, yes. You've got Arches. You've got Canyonlands, Zion, and Bryce. Yes. Right? Oh, Bryce. Yeah. We didn't even talk about Bryce. So one of the things we wanted to mention is that uh, so many of these national parks are paired up. So if you go to Yellowstone, you can do Tetons. Yes. If you go to Zion, you can do Bryce. You go to Arches, you can do Canyonlands. So that's... That, that was one of our ways that we can condense into the top 10 because Bryce is one of my favorites. Yes. Okay, so this is not technically on the list because we haven't been here, but we know it's going to be amazing. Yeah. And that is Olympic. Yeah, yeah. It is also on our list to, to visit this year. Uh, it's surprising that we haven't done it because this really is on a lot of top 10 mm -hmm. national park lists. Um, and so this year we're making the time to do it. We're also visiting, well, we're in the, uh, in the area, Mount Rainier yes. National Park. So again, Olympic. Rainier, right. and so we paired those up together. Uh, so we're excited, we have that going on, and then um, we're gonna hit Capitol Reef this year, which will complete our Mighty Five, because we've done four, but not the fifth. So we're excited about that. Yeah. All right, you wanna have some resources, including this, uh, the, the, the paper that Trish is holding is an article that has some more information on there that I think might be helpful. What, what URL did we come up with just now? Keepyourdaydream.com slash national parks. National parks. Okay, so speaking of resources, we already talked about the passport. Super <laughs> fun, all kinds of stamps. We didn't mention that there's specialty stamps too, depending oh, yeah. on if there's a 100 year anniversary, all kinds of stuff like that. That's super fun. And then when we were in Kitty Hawk, I picked this book up. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's plenty of other books, but this one was at the store and I totally enjoyed this reading it. This is a particularly it. good book. It's really good. You can tell that it's a little dated because it says 59 and there's all actually- 59, there's 63 now. There's actually 63. So anyway, but it gives you the hot spots, it gives you pictures, you get a really good idea of seasons and weather and what to do, where to take pictures, where to hike, and um, what it's best known for. So I really enjoyed this. I will include a link to this book in our description below, but we also added it <clears throat> to our reading list on our Amazon page. Yes, okay, now. 
top five drives? I can't leave without talking about top five drives. It's important. When you have multiple different kinds of family members, yeah. young, old, non-hikers, hikers, sometimes just getting in the car, having some snacks, and going for a drive well, is the best thing you can do. And we receive a lot of emails from people that have disabilities and yes. they want to know, like, where can I go and, and experience the park without having to hike? Without having to yeah. hike. Totally fair question. So, number one, with over 400 miles of paved road, mm -hmm. it's the Smokies. Yeah. In particular, we did um, Dragon. We went to a hike at Grotto Falls, and we were not out for a drive. We were headed to the trailhead of Grotto Falls Trailhead. Mm -hmm. But just getting to the trailhead and back was a single lane road, and it is forever one of my favorite drives as we wind through these roads and we go over these wood bridges. Let, dare I say the word spectacular? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was a great one. And then we've also heard Cade's Cove Drive in the Smokies is another good one that we haven't done. So maybe yes. we'll do that when we're there this, this summer. Oh, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And if you have a motorcycle, oh, out yeah. of control. Yeah, the, the tail of, of the, the, the dragon's tail. You know what I'm talking about. If you, if you ride, you know the dragon's tail. Yes. Okay, we mentioned this. It's going to the Sun Road in Glacier. When we were there, there was a rock avalanche, and so they closed the road. Once in a lifetime opportunity. For us to bike it. We were able to bike it, mm. and it was hard. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so fun. It wasn't hard for those guys with the electric bikes, though. They were, <laughs> they were, they were, um, I swear they, they were grimacing as they went by me, or they were smirking as they yeah, went smirking. by me. Yeah, smirking. Oh, that's so funny. No, that's a great, that's a great drive. Okay, um, I'm going to say Denali, and Mark is going to say, don't include Alaska because that's so hard for everybody. <laughs> Alaska to get is to. a national park. It's just the whole thing. So, um, but Denali, if you can get in the bus and go all the way back, it's like a forever tour for us. We said um, we're not going to be able to make it that long in the bus, so why don't we do um, a flight? And mm -hmm. so we flew by the mountain. I have to say that was an out of body experience. It was out of Talkeetna, Alaska, and um, Jason basically said, guaranteed view of Denali. About only 25% of the people who visit Denali National Park actually end up seeing Denali. Unless if you go to Talkeetna and you hook up with Jason, I'll put the link down below, and you go in his plane and you fly because it was spectacular. <laughs> okay, so that's so, the- um, So because Mark always tells me, okay, that's a thing in and of itself. And if you wanna see more of Alaska, check out our season five because we did Alaska and yeah. it was absolutely stunning or spectacular. Yes. Um, so in its place, I'm gonna put wa Wona. I think I might be pronouncing that correctly, but that's in Yosemite mm. and it's the main drive and it's where you can see Half Dome and then you drive through and it's just the granite mountains Amazing. that will take your breath away and then you end up down on the floor mm -hmm. and it's it's like nothing else. It's uh, the first time you're in Yosemite and you look up and you see El Cap, it's, it's over. So where we're going in the next few weeks, Shenandoah. Yes. Absolutely beautiful pictures. We haven't really been there. We've been on the outskirts. We haven't gone through the park. So we have reservations. We're going there. And um, it's called the Skyline Drive. Mm -hmm. And you can really get a glimpse and feel the park doing that drive. What's that, number four? So number five? We have Park well, Loop. Well, we, we talked about it, the Park Loop in Acadia. In Acadia. Yeah. So, um, as always though, we can't just stop at five. There's two, <laughs> there's two more, Arches and Zion. Both of those make spectacular Oh, driving drives. through Arches, yes, because you're inside the park and you're going around like what's called the Three Sisters and you're driving through. So one of the things that we're gonna put in this resource guide, and again, you can find it, keepyourdaydream.com slash national parks, is um, apps, our apps. Mm -hmm. Because if you get national park apps, that it will talk to you in the car. I did that with um, Caleb in Washington, D.C. because we had a rainy day and I was like, well, how are we gonna capture all these monuments? I don't know what to say about all these yeah. and just looking at them can sometimes be anticlimactic. Yeah. But when someone tells you the history, it's super fun. So uh, we'll leave some apps in this resource for you. Another, you through another app to consider is All Trails. That's the hike that we use to find hikes in the area. Mm -hmm. And then it's so many users are on this app that usually when you pull it up, you'll find a review from the day before. Yes. And so it's great to know, uh, you know how much snow there is, how wet is it, what you need to bring, how long is it. They'll tell you if you can bring a dog, they'll tell you if it's oh, yeah. easy, moderate, or hard. It's just a great resource. And then uh, the other resource, that, of, of course, that we think is available is the Summer Remember shirt. And yes. I say resource because uh, we can tag along with where you are this summer, which and is And other cool. people can find out where you went. Maybe if you post your picture and you put Summer to Remember and you can put a little snippet. Hey, yeah. I was here, this is what we did, this was great. Yeah. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it's just simply 
a lot of fun. Yes. And um, we love it. And we appreciate your support too. And then not only the support for KYD, but the support for Team Rubicon and everybody in the community. Because I think uh, we, everyone we meet within the community, we see a KYD hat or someone remember shirt, and we come up to them and I'm like, hey, nice shirt. And they're like, hey, what's up? Is is just the most genuine, friendly, supportive people. So we want to thank so you neat. for all your support over the years. And uh, let's make this a summer to remember. Okay, so that is our top 10 national park with a few extras. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, we love to hear your comments down below. If you think that you have a special tip for someone, put it down below so that we can all learn from each other. That's the mm -hmm. coolest part about KYD is this is a community yeah. where we come to support each other and enjoy each other's company. So thank you so much for being here with us every week. You make it special and we're glad you're here. I used to play it safe Walled off my heart to Like I said, that'd be the beach that I go to today. Um, but if you want to go check out North Beach, you can walk along this side of the fort and put you on a small beach on the north side. I like to tour the fort first, get hot, sticky, sweaty, and then go swim. <laughs> if that's your uh, plan, you can just stash your stuff at any one of these picnic tables right here. Grab a bottle of water, go tour the fort, come back out, grab your stuff, and then head to the beach.